uh, let's start on our backs with our knees wide and our feet together. So if for you with blocks underneath your um, thigh bones or your knees would help with that or blankets, go ahead and do that. Get cozy. And you can put your hands on your pelvis or on your heart or anywhere along your body and just allow yourself to breathe and take in this morning. So I really want us to give ourselves permission, not only as women, but James, you get to do this too, but allowing ourselves like pleasure and that pleasure to do things that feel good for our bodies and to delight in that experience of choosing things that feel good and not because we deserve it, right? We have a weird sometimes pleasure uh, relationship where we think that we have to do things to deserve, to ask for what we need or to nurture ourselves or to choose uh, activities or postures that just feel good, right? Um, so we're gonna just reset that by letting ourselves receive the things that feel good. So just take in some breath of that intention to feel good in your body, to choose those things that feel delightful, to give yourself permission. <sighs> Take about five more breaths. And then taking your hands over your head so that one palm's on top, one palm's on bottom. Letting your shoulders feel wide and heavy. Maybe you want to dedicate your practice today to a certain um, woman or mother, or maybe it's to all mothers, and maybe you've had multiple people in your life that have acted in that nurturing, caregiving role. So if you want to kind of name those in your mind and honor them with your movement, sending them love, feel free to do that too. And then switch the hand that's on bottom. Let those elbows feel heavy. Hmm. Couple more breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth if you want. And then taking your hands to the outer thighs to lift the legs up and then taking them wide outside your mouth making sure you have plenty of space. We're gonna windshield wiper the legs. So arms can stay by your hips or they can go out to the side, whatever feels good. This can be fast or slow. You can move more from your hips, the pelvis, or you can move more through your thighs and you might can play with both. And then just let those legs rest over to the right and let, let them just be heavy. So feel free to let that right ankle come on top of the left thigh for a little extra counterweight. And just allow that left thigh to kind of press forward and be extra heavy. Feel free to look to the left if you want to stretch your neck or you can send your gazing straight up. And then over to the second side, over to the left. Maybe you'll gaze over to the right and allowing again that right hip to feel extra heavy as you allow the thigh bone to reach towards the floor. Breathing in, breathing out. Wiggling your toes. And then bringing the legs back up to neutral. We're gonna do a little bit of bridge rolling. So I like a block for that, just to kind of connect to my core. If you don't have a block, it's totally fine. You can even roll up a, a dish towel or a, a blanket, that works too. On the inhale, the arms reach up. We're gonna take a long stretch here. So first just reaching through the thighs, little synergy of the inner thighs, and then lift the heels and roll down, letting the arms come down as your hips come down. And then next inhale, come up. If you want to lift the heels, go ahead. And then exhaling, curving the spine as you roll down. And just keep going, just like that. Inhale, exhale. Trying to really articulate, especially the lower spine, because that tends to kind of be a little gummed up sometimes, or we can't really articulate that. So taking your time. A couple more. If any one spot feels good, you can linger there. And 
and then all the way down. Nice to come back up to that bridge. You can keep the block behind uh, between your legs. You can even place your hands at the low back just to kind of remind your tailbone to be long. If your arms want to reach overhead, go ahead, or even a goal post might feel good. Just holding that bridge, building some heat in the low body. Maybe you wiggle your toes and stretch your toes out. So you can feel from the inner heel to the outer heel widening. And from the base of the heel, so close to your ankle, kind of pressing forward to the ball now. One more breath. And then lowering it down, letting the uh, block either stay if you'd like it or you can remove it. We're gonna just kind of hug the knees in, lift the chest. And then we're gonna allow the legs to stretch out, the arms to stretch out. Exhale. Inhale, and you can kind of go to diagonal if you want. Exhale, <laughs> inhale. Three more, exhale. Try not to pull on the neck, so it's okay for the neck to stay down. Exhale. Inhale, last one. Exhale, big curl up. And then inhale, stretch it out. Go ahead and take that block, and we're gonna, if you don't have a block, it's totally fine, so I'll kind of show you this. We're gonna go elbow to thigh, so you'll just have your leg a little bit closer if you're not using a block. If you do happen to have a block, the block goes in front of your thigh and the elbow here. So we just kind of create a little bit of synergy here. With that left leg, it's going to go straight to the sky. Okay, so you could just be doing the leg work without the upper core work. Otherwise, take your left hand behind your head, get a good grasp of it, elbow reaching up. And as we exhale, we're going to lift. So the left shoulder blade lifts, the leg lifts, and then we're going to inhale lower down. And just like 10 of these. Exhale, inhale, just to wake up the core. Try to pull the belly down as you lift the shoulders and lift the leg. Breathing in, breathing out. Just a little bit of press to that right elbow into the right thigh. Five more. Two more. And then go ahead and allow that left leg to come up, allow the right leg to come down, and just grab behind the hamstring and give a little stretch here. So you can roll the ankle, point and flex if you'd like. Then a couple breaths just for stillness, really reaching through the heel, allowing that low back to feel long. And then we're going to switch. So now the elbow comes to the left thigh, and you can just lift and lower. Or if you have a block, the block goes through the elbow. So it, again, doesn't really matter. We just want a little active kind of uh, engagement there, isometric. So the right hand goes behind the head, and we're going to lift the right scapula as we kind of lift through that right heel and then lower it down. So 10 of these. Try not to pull on the neck. Just feeling a little warmth through the core. Use your breath. Last three. Usually these are very effective, so you don't need many of these. You feel your core generally. And then we're going to release the left leg down, grab behind the right thigh, roll it. And then just kind of a couple breaths for stillness to really allow from the back of the thigh or reach through the heel. Toes reaching towards your pelvis. And then from here, let the knees go wide and kind of pull them in through the tops of the ankles. Maybe you roll side to side a bit. And as you're ready, we're gonna rock and roll up to um, all fours. So take your time if you want a couple cat cows or hip sways, go ahead and do that. And I start to wake up a little bit more through the hips. So as we take our hands up, kind of just right underneath the shoulders, and I like my index fingers like number one, uh, 12 on a clock down, we're going to take the right leg out. So I have my knee and my arch kind of in the same line. I like to turn my feet out just to whatever degree is natural. Um, you can always uh, take the toes straight up. That can be a lot of stretch for now, though. So we're going to cat-cow here. 
So cat cowing, moving the pelvis, moving the scapula. Hmm. Letting the head follow. And you'll notice that your thigh bone does turn a little bit. And then we're gonna tuck the toes under and rock back. So you might feel a groin stretch. If you wanna lift the toes up, you can do that. And then take another deep breath. You should be feeling a kind of a fascia, kind of bottom of the foot stretch on the, on the bent leg. And then come all the way up, we're gonna twist. We're gonna press the right arm. We're gonna lift the left. Doesn't matter if your arm is vertical. Allow yourself to press into the mat and lift that left arm. And then we're gonna thread and hover. So uh, when I say hover, you can hover like letting your head go, or if it can rest on a block of the floor, that works too. If you need a block or a blanket because it's uncomfortable, you can even just bring your knee in if that makes it better so that you're not struggling. Take another couple of breaths to reach through your left shoulder blade all the way out through your left hand. And then go ahead and back up to all fours. Bring your right leg in and then just kind of move your hips side to side or make circles. Then we're gonna extend the left leg out. So again, just kind of line up that knee to the arch, turn your foot whatever way it needs to turn so that it feels okay. And then we'll cat cow. Can be big through the hips, small through the hips. Maybe you want to feel more your shoulders today. But really breathing as we move. Then as we're ready, we're going to twist the left hand plants, the right arm lifts. Doesn't matter if your arm is vertical. Just really feel the pressing down and away and the reaching up that right chest. And then thread, and maybe you're hovering and letting the head go, or maybe you're resting the head on the mat. Just make sure it doesn't kind of crank your neck. You can always bring the left leg in. A couple more breaths. And then pressing into your palms, coming back up, tucking your toes under and rocking back. So this is where we get that foot stretch on your bent knee. Maybe a groin stretch because maybe you lift the toe or you play around with that ankle. Or just release your pelvis back. And then when you're ready, come back up. And then bring that left leg in, move your hips, kind of wag your tail a bit just to kind of let your hips settle in from that motion. And then as you're ready, tuck your toes under downward facing dog. Pedal the legs as you like. Maybe lift and lower. And then find some stillness for about five breaths when you feel ready. You can bend the knees though to allow the low back to continue to lengthen. Maybe you shake the head out, make sure all the tension comes out of the neck. Then nice and slowly walk your feet to your hands. Bending those knees generously, you might pedal the legs here. Make sure you have a wide enough stance that you don't feel like you're struggling to get towards the earth. And then bending both of those knees, rolling up nice and slow. So your first time to stand, so take your time, roll those shoulders a couple times. Open up the palms. Maybe roll your neck a bit. And just take a couple breaths to remember your intention today to open to things that feel good and pleasurable. And in that spirit honoring those people that have been special to you, those women, those role models. So we're gonna take a deep breath and the arms are gonna come up. We're gonna to twist to the right. And then our arms will come back up. We're gonna to twist to the left. And then arms come up, maybe there's a reach up. And then we'll bend the knees in the forward fold. We're gonna step the right leg back and the knee will come to the mat. And then I'm gonna press my left hand inside the left thigh, hips will stay kind of square, and I'm gonna open to the right side. So the first time we're just gonna go a little slow so you can feel this. So I'm more in a square stance, so I'm not getting that hip flexor work. Couple breaths, you can look down or let your head go. And then we switch, right hand goes down, and then your left hand can come to the thigh if you'd like, or if it wants to come up, you can let it come up. But 
again, you can look down or let your neck go. And sometimes it feels good to press into the thigh, you get a little bit more core activation that can feel nice for the lumbar. Take another deep breath. And as your hands come down, we're gonna come to all fours, tuck your toes, hover your knees for a little forward. And then right leg goes back, and then left leg goes back. Plank pose for two breaths. Lengthening out, letting the heart shine forward. Now come forward, if you wanna to drop to your knees, go ahead, lower all the way down. We're gonna to go to low cobra first. So even if cobra is quite a fluid for you, right, an interesting pose, bring your hands a little bit further forward. So sorry, I had to wait forward. So you just want your elbows, you know, kind of right, maybe forward of your armpits. So it's forward, shoulders and elbows are, are not in the same line. For just a moment, lift your head. So just your head, get your neck long, and reach from the crown to your toes. So your belly should be pulling away from the mat, but your pubic bone can press down. Now pull hands back so you get a little longer, and then just keep lifting from that heart out through the head. So you don't tuck your chin or you don't lift it. You continue to move. So it's gonna be a very small movement. I'm pulling back with the arms. I'm lifting from the belly to the heart to the head. Take another couple breaths, and then lower down nice and slow. Tuck your uh, toes under your knees, can stay down. Press to knee plank, and then lift your knees, high plank, and then downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, and then step your right leg forward, set up that square lunge, so it's knee under ankle, hip under knee. And then right arm comes down inside your foot. So if you want to use a block, you can. And then twist. And this, again, is not turning the hips. And I can look down and relax my neck. Couple breaths. And then the left hand goes down. And then I'm going to use right hand of the thigh to twist. But you're welcome to extend the arm up. And I can let the neck go or look down. As I push down, I'm going to pull and churn the belly away. One or two more breaths. And then the hands come down and forward, tuck your back toes under and step and fold. This time bend the left knee, generously lift the right. So twist and you can again look down. So as I straighten this right leg, I can kind of tap the right hip back. And then hands go down, right knee bends, left leg straightens and the left arm lifts. And I can keep the neck relaxing. And then both hands down, bring your hands to your waist, lift your chest so that the shoulders come on your back and come all the way up. A little bit of back arch, just a gentle back arch lift from the chest. And then coming back to standing, shake it out. So we'll go a little bit more fluidly through that same kind of flow, just easy breezy, just waking up the twisting body. So arms reach up, inhale, exhale, twist to the right. Keep your hips forward, inhale. Exhale, twist to the left. Look up, reach up, inhale, and then bend your knees, exhale. We're gonna take the left leg back. Right arm down, right arm inside, inhale, then exhale. Then you just switch it up right away. So just take your time, you're just doing like a breath or so, so you can move at whatever pace you want. Then from here, we go to all fours, tuck toes, lift knees, and then left leg back. Right leg back, plank for a couple breaths. Come forward, all the way down. So you can repeat low cobra, or if you'd like to walk your hands more like thumbs at sternum level, you can try it here. Same thing, push down, pull back, and continue lifting. So the closer your hands are towards the, your body and towards your waist, the harder it makes the pose. So you can kind of just play with that. When you're ready, come down. Walk your hands back so you can press up to plank, downward facing dog. Step your left leg forward 90 degrees, right arm inside the right thigh, lift up or press into the thigh, we did the wrong side first, that's okay. And then switch it out, left hand inside. Exhale down, step and fold. Then right knee straight and left, twist. Switch it out. And then hands down, hands to the waist. 
Come all the way up to standing, we'll arch back, and then hands to the heart. We'll do that one more time. So again, go at whatever pace you need to. You know that we're just twisting both sides. So if you want to go a little quicker, you can. If you want to go slower, you know what to do, okay? As you're ready, the arms are going to reach up. Twist to the right. Arms reach up. Twist to the left. Reach up, look up. On the exhale, fold. Right leg steps back. Left hand inside. So just breathing and moving doesn't really matter what pace. Hover the knees and you're stepping back one leg at a time, plank. We're working cobra again. So pressing down through the tops of the feet really helps. Doesn't matter where your arms are. Find something comfortable that your shoulders rock back. Then again, as we let the legs kind of strengthen, so even glutes and hamstrings, I'm using my arms. And then as you're ready, we'll transition downward facing dog. And then the right leg, when you're ready, steps forward. And then we twist away. And then we twist towards. And then we step and fold forward. Bend the left knee, straight in the right. Bend the right knee, straight in the left. Both hands down when you're ready, hands to the waist, slowly coming up. A little back arch if you'd like. And then just coming to a stand. So I'm just gonna kind of show you this next kind of flow. So we're gonna come into a low lunge. It's gonna look really similar, but then we're gonna come to a standing knee raise. So this will be a little maybe shaky for balance. So if you need to grab a wall, you can. So as we're running, we're gonna step back with the right leg and we're gonna come into a lunge. So it's just a lunge and you can have your hands on your heart or your hands down. So we're stepping back to a lunge and we're gonna twist either way. So you can twist to the left or if you like that inside twist, you can twist that way. So we're just going to, I'm just showing it to you. Then we're going to grab the knee and come up. We're going to widen the knee and we're going to twist again. And then we're going to come back down to a little lunge and then we're going to transition, okay? So that's the flow. We're going to do it a few times though before we move on. So uh, just kind of make sure if you want to get close to a wall space for your hands, you can do that, okay? So as you're ready, you're going to start in Tadasana, so standing tall. Remember, move from your core. So remember all that work we did in the core? Uh, imagine that you can tie the core to your feet, to your hands, so that you're moving kind of with that synergy, right? So step the right leg back and come into a little lunge. Twist of your choice. So towards your uh, bent leg or away. Come back in. Take your time. Press through your standing heel. Bring that knee up. And it may take a couple times. Open the leg. Bring it back to the midline and twist. Yeah, and then from here, go straight back down. So I'm gonna alternate which way I twist each time. We're gonna go the same leg, same leg. Come back down, bring it up, open it wide, take it towards a twist where you switch your arm, and then I go right back down. You have two more times, take your time. It's okay to wobble, and it's okay to have to take a couple extra steps. So if I have to take a step in, and then another step in, that's fine. But I have to catch my breath first and kind of stabilize before I move again. That's fine. And then as I'm ready, I'm almost there. Just a breath. Open. Close. <laughs> and then come on down to that lunge and then drop to your knees and lift up, low lunge. And then just breathe and pause for a moment, letting that hip release forward. Good, take those hands back behind you, come to your waist, and then bring the elbows on your back and down. And as you kind of let the hips press forward, can you lift your belly out of your hands a bit? Now from here, tuck your toes under, lift your back knee, and then turn towards your right so that you're in a wide leg, forward fold. So now I might have to readjust my legs. Shoulders on the back, chest lifts up. 
And then I'm gonna bend the knees if I need to hinge, keeping my hands at my waist if that works. If that's painful for your low back or feels unstable, go ahead and release your hands. Five breaths, let the head go. Keep broadening your collarbones. A couple more breaths. And then as you're ready, hands release down to the floor. Walk towards your left and turn your left leg to face forward. So just like we did last week, if you were with me, we have heel to arch. We're in a warrior two stance, if I'm facing down. Now I'm going to take my right arm and I'm going to place my right shoulder on my back and peel up to triangle. If you need a block, place it under your left arm or lift your hand to your shin. Now I can let my head go or look down. Breathe in, let the tailbone release towards your pubic bone so that you feel the core support. Strong through your legs. Now press into both of your feet to come up. Then your left toes turn forward, your right toes turn out. And we're gonna to come towards warrior two. So take a moment to feel both of your legs nice and strong. Then as I keep rooting through my back leg, I'm gonna find a side angle pose. And the arm's gonna come up. And then I'm gonna inner rotate it and come to a half bind. So I can kind of let my hand rest here and I can do a neck release here. Hand can be on a block or inside your thigh as well. So as your kind of forearms at your low back, pull your navel towards the low back. Even as you release the left hip kind of down and forward. Letting the neck go or looking down. Feel free to do a full bind if that works for you. And then as you're ready, we're gonna press into those legs, come back up to warrior two. And then again, straighten both legs. This time we're gonna take the hands out to the side. We're just gonna hinge forward and fold. So if you need your hands at your waist, that will kind of diminish the load on the low back. Strong through your core. Take another deep breath. And then twisting to the right. So I'm just gonna move from my core and to tap the floor. Maybe I can grab my ankle. Take another couple breaths, just feel the rotation. Now bend your right knee so you get a little bit more rotation. And then releasing all the way down towards the front edge of your neck. So I just have to transition my feet, that's all. Come into plank pose. Take your time. Come forward, drop to your knees if you need to, all the way down. We're practicing cobra today. So remember, low cobra is what we did first with the hands more towards the throat or you can walk your hands more towards your chest or your sternum. We push down, we pull back, we strengthen the back body, and we get long first. Then we continue reaching from the belly to the heart, from the heart to the face. In one line, so my chin never lifts. Strong through your legs, pull back with your core, and then all the way down, transition as you need, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Then as you're ready, nice and slow, you can hop or jump, top of your mat. Long spine, hands to your waist. If you wanna bend your knees, come all the way up to standing. Nice, okay, we have that second leg. So we were stepping back with the right leg first, or at least that's what I was doing. You might have done the different one. So now we're gonna do that same thing four times, that low lunge, which comes to a knee raise, out and then in with the twist. Okay, so take your time, remember it's not a race. Just kind of get in your own rhythm where you can just cycle through your breath, okay? So as you're ready, it's a little lunge. Then I twist, come back in, gather in that strength to come up. We open it out to the side, and then we twist it. And then I'm gonna transition right back down. Taking your time, there's no rush to get there. So you can kind of enjoy feeling all the different muscles that turn on. We've been strengthening those legs all month. So move nice and slow. All 
I notice the slower I go, the easier it is sometimes to balance because I'm not rushing. And then I can kind of feel where I need to maybe add some more uh, weight to maybe the inside arch if I notice that that feels like it's kind of lifting off the mat. And on this last one, we're gonna come all the way down to that lunge. So finish out your four, and then the knee comes down and we're gonna lift up. So taking your time. So first we get that lift, right, with our arms reaching. Keep going if you're still going. And then we take the hands to the waist to allow the hips to maybe go a little further forward. Shoulders on the back, but now I'm lifting my belly towards my heart towards my throat without feeling the throat tense up. Okay, as you're ready, tuck your back toes under, lift up. And then quarter turn to your left for that wide angle fold. So I'm just gonna turn to my mat. Mm -hmm. And then as you're ready, we're gonna hinge and fold. Breathing in and breathing out. So maybe I'm adjusting the weight distribution between my arches and heels. And just kind of playing with where the sensations are like for that. Now release your hands down to the mat. I'm gonna turn my right toes forward and let my body follow me, adjusting my stance if I need to. And I'm gonna press my hips kind of forward so they don't swing back. Then grabbing onto my right ankle or shin or even a block, my left shoulder pulls up and back and come into a triangle. I can continue to let my head go or look down. This is where I want to find the core and reach the core into my feet. And then lifting through that side lateral seam. Okay, one more breath. And then pressing into your feet, coming up. Turning, and then we're going to come into side angle, first warrior two. So readjust, and then left leg forward, warrior two. I really want to turn on that back leg so that I have lots of support as I hinge forward. I'm going to come to my thigh, but you're welcome to come to a block. Arm up, inner rotate, and then it's a neck release. I'm really trying to let that right shoulder drip down my back. My head releases, or I look down. Nice deep breaths. Belly is pulling towards the low back. Same thing, I press into my back leg, especially as I come up, arms up. Then I turn back into that wide leg fold. If I need to bend my knees, I certainly should as I hinge forward. And I'm just halfway. So I'm gonna feel the hamstrings. I wanna move from my left waist towards the right leg. So it could be a really small twist where I don't touch anything. So just kind of see what you get on your own. And then if you wanna add that right knee bend, you'll notice that that adds a lot more of the rotation. So kind of keep looking down if you want. Then continue transitioning towards your right leg so that you're in the low lunge. And then this is going to be plank. Chaturanga. So if you want to add the push-up, you can. And practice your good, strong cobra. So untuck your toes. I'm going to watch you guys. Untuck your toes. Press down to your feet. Pull the hands back. Yeah, really nice, you guys. So it should be strong here more nice, Kathleen. Yeah. Really nice work. So Melissa, drop your chin just a little bit. There you go, nice. And now bring your core to your heart. Yeah, there you go. And now through your neck, that's it, that's it. Really nice. Awesome, yeah. And then release down, take your time. Pressing up to plank and then downward facing dog. But if you need to transition through anything else, please do that. Okay. Take a couple breaths, maybe bubble your lips. That can be a nice way to release energy. And then we're gonna come all the way forward. So walk or hop. <sighs> Fold it down and then hands to the waist as you bend the knees and then lift all the way up. Nice. Roll those shoulders. Okay, so as we go through this one more time, we're not gonna do four times on each side. Uh, so we're just going to go at whatever pace works for you, okay? Then we're going to add on a bit when we come to the standing work, okay? So we're going to step back with the right leg. Come into that lunge. 
okay? So you can have your hands at your heart. You can have your hands on the floor. Twist whatever way you want. So I can twist away, hip square. I can twist towards, hip square. Okay, just hold for an extra beat, kind of getting your heart to lift. And now you can reach your arms forward as you want, so that as you bring your leg up, you're coming into a standing knee raise. And just hold here, proud chest. Let your tailbone relax down. So options to add on here, if you want to grab the outside edge of your foot or your big toe to straighten your leg, otherwise take it out to hold. Arm might come out, you can gaze over your left shoulder. Okay, bring it back to the center. Again, you can grab onto the outside edge of your foot or straighten your leg if you want. Twist. Take another deep breath. And then re-bend the knee. How do we transition back towards that high lunge? Fold it forward. Really nice work, you guys. And then you can repeat either knee down, low lunge, or if you'd like to go high lunge, we'll do that. Same work of opening up through the chest. So you can choose high or low, whatever would feel good for your body. Okay, we're all gonna transition to that wide leg forward fold. So first coming here, if you'd like to bind your arms or use a strap for this, you certainly can. Lift the chest and then fold on in. Let the head go. And then releasing your hands down, going towards the left leg. So I move my left foot forward as I move my arms. So you've got some options. I can repeat the same work, triangle pose. Second round, if I'd like a half moon, I can step my right leg in a bit. And maybe I come to a half moon and come with hands to heart. So you have about three or four breaths to play with whatever works for you. Those of you balancing, remember inner thigh lines where we want to root, outer thigh lines where we want to kind of lift. If you're in half moon, come back into triangle. Press into your back leg, come all the way up. Warrior two facing the opposite side of your mat. Big breath in. So this time we're going to add a bind here. So go ahead and bind your arms even if the elbows are bent. And as you come into side angle, can you use your bottom arm to lift your top shoulder back? And then let your head go. You can always repeat what we did on the first side. So head releases. I'm strong through my legs, strong through my side core. And then as I'm ready, I'm going to come back up to warrior two, float the arms, straighten the leg as I come back in. Take a deep breath and then hinge forward. So remember, turning from the core, I might just hover, doesn't matter if I touch the earth. Then as I wanna kind of play with it, I can bend the knee. And maybe I get a bigger twist, a little bit more inner thigh. Go ahead and release the hands down. We're gonna to turn towards the front leg and then go ahead and walk that right foot in. And we're going to be in a short warrior two as I come up. So short warrior two, pretty short. Then I'm going to straighten the left leg. So I have both hips somewhat turning forward. The right one doesn't have to. My right arm is going to reach up and get nice and long. And as I reach up, I'm going to go diagonally to the left. So maybe I touch my shin. Maybe I have a block left hand to the small of the back. And then we're going to twist to the left. I can look down or towards the left. I want to find both of my feet. Feel the length coming out of that left hip as it moves back. Okay, one or two more breaths. You've got it. Soft jaw. And then as you're ready, re-bend the left knee. Hands come to the floor. And you're going to bring the right leg behind the left and take a seat. If you didn't get that, just take a seat. Yeah. 
Okay, so first I have both knees bent. If you want to straighten your right leg, please do that. That works too. We just want to get both of your sitting bones on the mat. So it's just more important that you can feel that than it is that you have a double knee wrap. Okay, so right hand grabs the outside of the left thigh, and then we twist to the left. So here's some options. I can continue just doing this. I can grab onto that left foot, extend the left arm and twist, hovering. I can even rock back a bit, hover both legs. So I could be doing this if that seems fun and pleasurable today, and if not, I just stay with my twist. Okay, then as you're ready, come back to the center. And I'm gonna open up that right leg over to the right corner of my mat. The left foot comes inside the right inner thigh. So I don't have a square stance. I have more of a, you know, kind of an obtuse angle here. This is where sitting on a blanket or pillows can be helpful, especially if you feel tension in that left knee. It's a great place just to stick a block so I can release through that. So first I'm gonna twist to the left so that I'm twisting away from my straight leg and I get this whole right side channel nice and open. And I'm just gonna take my right arm towards my right shin and maybe a block. If I had a strap, I could grab the strap. And then I'm gonna take the left arm up and over. So now it's a right side stretch. So I could stay here. I could come into a neck release. I could come into a half bind where I just turn that shoulder. So you just kind of choose what feels good. And again, I'm opening up the left side seam. So I want that left knee that's bent to be heavy. Keep your breath going. And then using like your left arm, like it has a counterweight, let your head be last. And now turn towards your right leg. This is kind of another variation of the same twist, but now we're going towards the same leg and we're gonna relax the head. So you can grab the foot if you can. If you can't, just pushing your arms one back, one forward works too. Let those thighs relax. And then as you're ready, we're gonna come up. The left hand plants by the left hip. And I'm just going to kind of lift up, a little side stretch, a little back bend if I want. Whatever feels good. And then as I'm ready, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to pull both knees in, roll onto my back. Kind of round it out. So I could do, I could come into a bridge pose if that would feel good. I can bind and come into a bridge pose. If a wheel pose felt good, we felt prepped for that, you could, that's the hands down. Or I could just kind of rock and roll myself up and go through a vinyasa and practice my uh, cobra pose. Yeah, so I want you to just kind of choose your own adventure there. And then we're gonna come into our second side. So take your time, yeah, whatever feels good. Yeah, take your time, there's no rush, so if there's a couple other things you wanna do. And when I say come to the second side, so when you are ready, we're gonna come all the way forward and then come to standing, so no rush. No rush. Okay, so here's that final side, so this is where we're gonna step the left leg back, that's the leg that's moving, and come into that lunge, so when you're ready, we're gonna step it on back. Remember, you can have your hands at your heart. My hands can be on blocks or the floor. Twist whatever way you want, towards your leg, away from your leg. It's a little bit awkward away from the leg, but it can be interesting to work the floor that way. Just a couple more breaths. And then again, your arms might go forward to get your body nice and long before you pull that knee in when you're ready. Then take time to really feel this low back release. By pulling your knee in, you should allow your low back to kind of feel a good release there. This is where those of you that have the flexibility to grab your outer foot or big toe, you could do that as you take your leg out. 
I'm not feeling that today, so I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> but I know some of you can do that. The same thing as we come back towards the midline and you twist. You could twist, keeping your knee bent, or you could straighten the leg or grab the foot. So it's whatever feels good to you. Couple more breaths. Then as you're ready, we're going to unbind ourselves and come into that high lunge just for a moment. Then you're going to decide low lunge, knee down, or high lunge, knee stays lifted. Then your hands can come to the low back if you want to kind of allow the hips to settle down while your heart lifts up. Just kind of deepens your lunge. A couple more breaths before we'll transition to that wide leg. So all I'm going to do is turn towards the left or pick the knee up if I've done that. Remember, this is where we were binding. So you can choose to bind or keep that hand to your waist, maybe a strap, and fold on it. We just want to open the chest, so we're trying to avoid the shoulder rolling towards the ears, so giving our neck the chance to get long. But of course, hands on the floor is more supportive for the lumbar. Okay, releasing the hands, we're going to walk towards the right, letting our right thigh bone turn with us. This is where blocks can be helpful. Remember, half moon was the option here. So if I want to pull up, I'll come back into that triangle pose. Maybe I'm coming into half moon by shortening my stride. I like blocks, but if I don't have them, I can put my hands at my heart. I want to root to that inner seam as I lift from the outer seam of my standing leg. And from inner thigh and outer hip, I'm evenly lifting. Pelvis gets lighter as I lift the core out of the pelvis. And then drop it back down if you're in half moon to come into triangle. Now anchor through your back leg to come up, and then turn, and now it's left side, warrior two. So set it up, you have plenty of time. Now I'm gonna bind my arms, and as I first free my chest, so it's totally okay to have an open heel of the hand or just still use hands at waist. Press into your back leg as you hinge forward. And I'm trying to get the right shoulder blade back, so I'm gonna use my left arm to kind of pull my right wrist down, and then the head can go or I can look down. So I'm gonna feel strong through my legs and my head and neck can feel easy. Okay, one more deep breath. And then we're gonna use the class to pull myself up. Nice warrior two. Pivot back to that wide angle. Remembering that you can bend the knees to allow your pelvis more freedom as I hinge forward. So I'm going to find that length across the scapula, across the chest, and I'm going to twist. It could be a very small twist. Maybe I bend the knee to continue twisting. And I can look down. I'm going towards the right and say that. And then continuing towards the right, I'm going to set up that short warrior one stance. So I'm going to come up for a moment, and then I'm going to readjust as I need to widen my stride or anything like that, so that that left hip's not pointing to the left side of the, of the room. It's more forward, but I have to kind of play with this in my low back, whatever feels good. Then the left arm comes up, I get nice and long, hinge forward, and at that angle, right, because I'm trying to twist the torso. You could use a block for your left hand, hand of the small of the back, or Palm face up. One more deep breath, get as long as you can. And then bend the front knee so you can take the left knee behind it. So I'm gonna come back so I can face you again. This is where I could straighten the left leg. And then I'm gonna twist to the right. So sit nice and tall. And this is where we have some add-ons, you can just Enjoy this twist on a block or a blanket, or I can grab the outer edge of my right leg, straighten it. Maybe I float the right arm. Maybe I lean on back. So see what feels good. And then as you're ready, coming back in the way we came, we're gonna release out, and then that right foot goes inside the left leg. 
and I'm gonna kind of turn my right knee to face back a bit. So I have a pretty open stride. You can close it off if this is better for your low back. It's simply a feel thing. If it feels like it strains, right, then you wanna bring the knees in a bit, so play with that distance. If your knee is above your hip point, it's great to have something to relax your knee on. So a blanket or a pillow can be good. We're gonna turn to the right, and this might be a good time to relax that right thigh down, so I kind of soften the hip crease here. Then just take your left arm towards the left shin, and then just kind of easing there, easing there. Right arm can follow, but for me this starts to kind of pull on my neck, so I'm gonna do a neck roll. So allowing my wrist to draw my right shoulder down, the head gets heavy, I can even turn towards my straight leg. So nice deep breaths, you guys. <sighs> and then using that wrist to kind of help draw your torso up. And then we're just gonna counter twist, so now we're gonna turn towards our straight leg. Doesn't matter if you can grab anything on that leg. So just kind of turning your right waist and folding. Again, moving your a body more to square might give you more access, but you can just kind of see what feels good. So for me, I get a nice like side back stretch. So I kind of enjoy that wider stride. And then slowly coming up, right hand to the right, kind of outside thigh. And I just kind of lift up and I can play with this. Whatever feels good. And then I'm gonna come onto my back, maybe a bridge, maybe you flip to your belly and you go through a flow with cobra or working on cobra. Yeah, so just kind of whatever feels good. You can windshield wiper, have the baby. Yeah, just whatever feels good. Nice, Rachel, that looks good. How does that feel? Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're gonna meet in down dog. There's no rush to get there. No rush at all to get there. Okay. Breathing in, breathing out. So we're gonna do some uh, kind of easing into pigeon, I'll say, okay? So we're gonna bring the right knee almost towards pigeon. I'm gonna let the ankle come down. And I just kind of do some, just kind of little mini push-ups just to kind of get that hip to release. And I'm gonna push it back to down dog and I'm gonna switch. I bring my left knee towards my wrist, put the ankle down, and then just a little bit of push-ups just to kind of let that hip release. Just do that maybe a couple times on each side. So I'm gonna keep my shin up, just working the ankle down. This doesn't work, you're like, I don't feel anything, that's totally fine. Then when you're ready, take the right knee and go ahead and release it down. So that you have your knee at an angle, it's not right, uh, it's not front. And I have my heel at my hip point somewhat. So this is where if my right hip's really elevated, I can put a block or a blanket underneath, that can feel really nice. So tuck your back toe, that's your straight leg under, and then walk it back a little bit and place the top of the foot down. So you can choose to be upright, sometimes that's a nice stretch, I can bring my hands to the side edges of my mat and pull up. You might like that today. Uh, you might like to fold forward. So there is a way to twist, so you can reach back towards your leg or you can reach the other way. So I could continue twisting if that felt good. I could also twist more gently on my forearm. So I know you guys were liking twists, so this is an option too. Or just relax. Make a forehead pillow with your blocks or your fists. And then really allowing your body to soften in what you've chosen. By focusing your breath, so almost like if you could take your breath and send it to an area of your body to kind of soften the tissues, oxygenate them. Yeah, so really letting yourself do that. 
maybe you're counting your breath. So you're just, again, visualizing the breath moving to that area so that you really allow your mind to be where your body to track that sensation. Nice. Relax jaw tension. Might even move your mouth around. Sighs or open mouth exhales can be super nice. So take one more giant breath in, a slow, continuous, longer breath out. So kind of like a <sighs> Nice. So from here, anything goes. So you might want to cat cow. A lot of people like to do some hip rolls so that you can kind of bring that leg up and do some hip rolls. You can do this in all fours too. It can feel really nice to, to do that. Okay, so we're gonna continue opening up the left leg before we go to the second side, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you straighten your right leg and bend your left knee back. So just kind of watch this. I'm gonna use a block. You could sit on a blanket or a pillow. So just to try it out. So I'm sitting back, sorry, right leg flat or straight. My heel is up towards the outside of my hip. My foot is flat on the floor. Okay, so I'm not sitting on my heel, and I'm gonna straighten this right leg. So I'm sitting on a block, and I'm gonna feel this out. Some of you will not need a block. So as I walk my hands back, I can kind of lift my block and then set my hips back down, and I can see how this feels. This could be plenty, plenty for that left hip, or I could slide the block down and out. So I'm gonna roll more towards the right, totally fine. And now the block can be kind of like a ramp, so I could set it up. I'm going to show you side profile well. It could be something that I allow myself to rest on, and my neck can relax, I, or I could put two blocks. So I'm getting a pretty big stretch to this left frontal hip. This doesn't work for all knees. So some of you will come down to your forearms, and that could be wraps, or even just your hands. And you might say elevated on a block. So I want you just to kind of feel this out. It's a pretty big stretch. Okay. And again, it doesn't work for all knees. So if this one's just not working for you, right? You could always come onto your back. And I could allow myself sit. We're working the left. So this could be an option. Stretching my left leg out on a block or because again, sometimes the knees just don't like that amount of flexion. So take your time setting it up, whatever works for you. So if you're on your back, because this doesn't work with a leg in half your asana, you'll just allow the left leg to straighten and the right knee to bend. And you could be on something like a block or a blanket, or you can just be on the floor. And just take about five or so more breaths. Reach out if you guys have questions, if you're not sure what you're doing or you're not feeling anything, or you're not sure a good modification. Yeah, as you're ready. So you gotta come up pretty slow, right? Because this is a pretty intense, uh, Stretch. Feel free to come up, and if you want to come forward a bit, you can. Coming out of this pose is just as important as coming in, so I like to lean to the right and then move my leg. And then I like to windshield wipe or do something to kind of shake all that out. We're just going to go straight into pigeon on the second side. So it was going to be the left leg that comes forward. So whatever you do, if you want to try a vinyasa, cat, cow, anything you need, the left leg is going to come forward. Then again, as I come in and I set it up, I tuck my back toes under, walk it back, and then I'm tuck. This is where I've got the options to stay up, to reach back towards outside leg, towards inside leg, or to come down, prop myself up on my forearm. Lots of options. So you're going to choose what works for you. And then soak in your breath. So the most important part is just that soaking in of the breath. Letting your mind rest on sensation. 
so that we don't get into sensation and go somewhere else. We stay in the sensation. We can de-escalate with our breath, with making adjustments if it doesn't feel right. Maybe slowing the breath down or some open mouth exhales or sighs can be nice. So send your breath to some spot for the last three breaths. Maybe you're then slowly coming out. And this is where you can choose hip circles on all fours or down dog. You can cat cow, you can child's pose. So however you need to get there. And then we're gonna set up for our final stretch here. So the left leg's gonna be the straight leg if you're doing this pose. And again, I, I'm gonna roll the leg back so that I'm on the top of the foot. It's okay to lean to the left to some degree. Um, let's see if there's a chat. Oh, nice, Sasha. I'm so glad you joined. Okay, and then I'm gonna just first explore going back and lifting the hips up and back a second. So that might be just all I can do. So I'm just gonna stay here and relax. And again, if this just isn't working for my knee, then I'm gonna come onto my back and the right leg will extend and I can just stay here and just kind of stretch or I can add a little bit of something under my lumbar. So, but it's opening up the right frontal hip. So that's what we're trying to do. So. Reach out and get unmute yourself if you're not sure what to do or you're like, I don't know how to get that stretch. Yeah, it looks good, you guys. Nice. Yeah, looks good. Really nice. Send your breath there. Kind of imagining that softening of the tissues at the front of that hip. Last couple breaths. Okay, so slowly coming up. If you wanna hinge forward a bit, just to lengthen out your low back, you can. Otherwise, really carefully lean towards your straight leg to, re to release your leg. And this is where like cat cow, windshield wipering, right? Whatever is gonna work to kind of release your Nice. Okay. So we're gonna sit either on a block, so on your shins, cross-legged works too. You can put a block if you wanna sit back in Virasana. So we're gonna do a little heart work and then finish with a little gratitude and breath work. So uh, we're just first gonna kinda just really just get some energy going here. So just rolling the shoulders up and back so you can Open up the space, and then taking your arms out to a goal post. So let the wrists go back just slightly so that your elbows come forward, and then pull the elbows away from your chest. Take some deep breaths. One more. Release your neck out. And then releasing your hands. We're gonna slide the arms up, inhale. Slide the hands to the heart, exhale. Do it again, like you're drawing up energy. Inhale, exhale, one more. And then rubbing your hands together. Kind of letting it kind of come over your heart. So to kind of imagine if you were to kind of Draw in some of your heart energy, that front on your hands, and like we're going to form like a little ball. And so you can have imagine what this ball might look like. And I want you to imagine again who you were dedicating your practice to. 
can make it bigger, you can toss it side to side. We're just trying to really form this ball full of our gratitude for, it. again, it can be a general gratitude. It can be to someone specific. And then as you're ready, you're gonna send this to them. So holding them in your heart, believing in your power to send energy through time and space, even if they've departed, and just allow that energy to extend out of you. And you can do that to several people, so you can bring that energy ball back. And again, it's just colored with your intention to send love, gratitude. And so if you have five people or you wanna do it just for one person, just do it as long as you need. And if you don't feel anything in your hands and you don't feel anything, just trust that your intention to think of that person, right, to send energy is powerful and that can still be felt. And then when that feels complete, you can take a moment And then we're gonna lie onto our back, just like we began, again, so knees wide, feet together. And we're gonna do a three-part breath before we enter Shavasana. So get cozy, so there's a few final shapes that you wanted, feel free to do those. And then the three-part breath is imagining filling up your belly with breath, and then filling up the side of your body, kind of up to the sternum, and then the final breath is up to your heart and throat, and then you slowly release it, as if you're kind of like has a puncture in a balloon and it's slowly dissipating, okay? So you breathe out nice and slow. So you're filling in nice and slow, and it doesn't have to be choppy, you can just kind of, like kind of let it be a dimensional breath in, and then a dimensional breath out. So as you're on your back, see if you can feel the sides of the ribs, the bottom ribs filling. Maybe even have moving your hands to the side of your ribs if you generally can't feel breath there. So there's any part of your whole rib cage body, right, your lung, that you can't feel, maybe move your hands there. And take some of those big breaths in. So do that for maybe three more rounds, that dimensional breath in, and then that slow, continuous breath out. And then when you're ready after the end of that breath cycle, just relax. I'm gonna spritz you with heart honey. All about healing, loving, open-hearted, right? So just allowing yourself to breathe in this energy that I send you from my heart to yours. <sighs> just let yourself just feel your body. Let your mind do whatever it wants to do, and you're just allowing yourself to rest.
Okay, just breathing. I'm gonna read you a poem by John O'Donohue. It's called For a Mother. Mother, your voice learning to soothe your new child was the first home sound we heard before we could see. Your young eyes gazing on us was the first mirror where we glimpsed what to be seen could mean. Mother, your nearness tilled the air, an umbilical garden for all the seeds of thought that stirred in our infant hearts. You nurtured and fostered the space to root all our quietly gathering intensity that could grow nowhere else. Mother, formed from the depths beneath your heart, you know us from the inside out. No deeds or seas or others could ever erase us. So once again, maybe placing your hands on your heart or somewhere along your body, just to remember all those people, right, who have been in that role to nurture, to love you, to support you, to guide you. Just holding those uh, amazing people in our hearts. And those of you that are mothers or are in motherly roles, really opening yourself to acknowledge what a gift it is to be a mother. May we receive again that, that love that exists between those in which we get to mother and the gift it is to love someone in that way. And then if you'd like to move again, begin to move again nice and slowly. So you might want to roll to your side before you come up so that you can use your hands and let your head be last. And then allowing your hands to gather at our heart space, acknowledging this amazing community that gets to gather together. Thank each and every one of you, Susan, Dana, Kathleen, James, Melissa. And Melissa, I don't know your husband's name, but thank you for joining Don. I know Jen had to go and Sasha, Rachel. Thanks you all so much for being here, for being a part. Love you all so much. I hope you have a really yummy day of just enjoying whatever it is you get to enjoy. And I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow afternoon. Namaste.